Supersizing business owners, I'm talking to you today. Are you investing in continuous learning? Let's talk about the seven keys to continuous learning. And are you using it in your organization to build and grow and supersize? I have learned through lots of experience, some good, some bad, that it's imperative that we continuously learn and grow. And I call it lifelong learning but other people call it continuous learning. I think continuous to me means we're doing it every day and all the time. And actually we are if we're open to it. Uh, but lifelong learning means I don't stop learning after I get out of formal school. Remember when we all used to go uh, K through 12, kindergarten through 12th grade, and then you could decide, am I going to go on to learn more or am I not? And a lot of people actually in my generation just stopped learning then. Maybe they'd read a book every couple of years or something, but for the most part, uh, either they did on the job learning, they got a job and, and learned as they went and based on what they needed and wanted advanced through their career or their business or their profession, uh, or they went to college and got a degree. And, you know, it'd be nice if even in my time, uh, we worked in the same thing that we went to college for, <laughs> but that seldom happens. I uh, started in, I, I went to college for engineering and I ended up, uh, going the leadership route and management route with my first job out of college and pretty much stayed in that, uh, got directed to the quality function, which I love because you get to stick your nose in everybody's business and the entire organization, which is why I was in corporate America in the first place. I wanted to see how different businesses ran from the inside out so I could do a better job creating and building and supersizing my own businesses. So what are these keys to continuous learning? These are the seven things that I've learned in no particular order. Uh, but that have helped me to understand the importance of having a learning, not only learning individuals, but a learning organization. The first is being willing to fail in order to learn. Guess what? If you never do anything, you're never going to fail, but you're also never going to learn and grow and expand and become a better version of yourself. Secondly, focus on the process rather than the outcome. Now, for a lot of us who are results oriented and goal oriented and type A personalities, this is probably one of the hardest ones of the seven keys to continuous learning. But the truth is, if we don't take action, if we don't try, if we don't do things, if we don't stretch our comfort zone, we're not going to learn anything. And our circle becomes really, really small, right? We can't supersize our business if we're stuck in a little circle. We need to stretch that comfort zone, explode it out. And that means trying things and perfecting the process of learning, not necessarily the results that we get from each book we read or from each course we take or from anything. However, I think that that's a mindset thing as well. If, and I decided a long time ago when I first started learning and doing personal development work and things that if I could just get one idea out of a course or a book or a topic or a lecture or an event, then it was worth my time and energy attending that event. Why? Because it's almost impossible to calculate the impact and the positive impact of that one idea. You know, one idea can be worth a billion dollars nowadays. Uh, thirdly, don't be afraid to ask questions. <clears throat> now, I've had several mentors that have pounded this one into my head. When in doubt, ask. And I am one of those people that have a difficult time asking, not asking questions per se, but asking for help. And those are two entirely different things. And once I separated asking for questions, asking questions from asking for help, it became really easy for me to ask questions. Uh, asking questions is because we're curious and we want to know and we want to understand. People actually want to share information with you if you ask them questions. Of course, the right questions. If you ask them about their business's trade secrets, they're probably not going to tell you. Uh, number four, take time for reflection and finding those aha, epiphany, revelation moments in what you're learning, right? There is no point in continuous learning as defined by many industries. You know, people in different industries and different licensing and things have to take updated courses. When I was in the real estate industry and I had my real estate license and my, and my broker's license, I had to take continuing education classes. People in different industries, different trades, different professions take continuing education. But it's kind of like when you went through and got your education in the first place. 
there's people in college that partied their way through college, got their degree, but probably don't even remember those four or five or how many ever years they were there. And then there's people that went to college and got the most they could out of that experience because they were there to learn and get their money's worth out of what they were there for. Uh, and so I've always told myself and my kids, what you put into things is what you get out of them. Uh, so take your t take some time to actually use and apply the things that you're learning. Continuous learning for learning's sake is, is okay and good because it makes you a better human being. But if you never apply it, if you never use that, what's the point? Uh, it's kind of like tracking and, and data collecting in organizations. Uh, I, I used to collect to do so much data analysis in corporate America as part of the quality function and realized that 98% of it we never used for anything. We just documented it, but we never used it for decision making to improve our processes or anything. And I found that super duper frustrating because it felt like a waste of time and energy. If you're going to collect the data, you might as well at least analyze it and use it for something like good decision making or continuous improvement. Uh, number five, key to continuous learning, play to your strengths. There is no point, and there's a lot of point, uh, a lot of emphasis on fixing what is wrong with us or what our weaknesses are and, and filling those in. And the truth is we're probably weak at something or not good at something because we don't like it or it doesn't feel right to us. So focus on building up your strengths and learning how to enhance them versus fixing your weaknesses or what's wrong with you or what, okay, it's always what other people think is wrong with you, right? It's not what we think is wrong with us. Uh, number six, learn from people around you. Everyone you come in contact with is here to teach you and show you something, even if it's just a reflection of how you're acting in a certain situation. Everyone comes into our life for a reason, for a season and a reason, I like to say. Uh, so learn from the people around you and surround yourself with people you want to learn from, that you want to model, that you want to learn from. And finally, build a portfolio of experience. And... Uh, I did this in corporate America when I was switching jobs. During my career, I would keep, I, I had an awesomeness file that I kept because it made me feel good. So when something bad happened at work and I was feeling a little down, I would get out my awesome file and I would take a peek through that. And that would always help me to switch from feeling bad to feeling good. I also kept examples of projects that really went well, letters of, of recommendation, certificates, awards, things like that in a binder. So when I went from job to job and, and I switched companies, a, you know, several times in my career, uh, my corporate career, but had my own businesses on the side while I was in corporate America. And I used that to demonstrate what I was capable of. Why? Because people hire you for your potential and for the results that you can get for them. People hire you to solve a problem for them. And, and that was my way of visually showing that I could solve a whole lot of problems. So those are some of the things that I have learned, some of the key uh, factors in continuous learning and why I am a lifelong learner and a proponent of that. We build this into ourselves and then we demonstrate that and we build it into our organizations. Why? There's tons of advantages to having your people be better. Our people are our most important resource. So we want to make sure that we're investing in them and ourselves so that number one, we get out of the way and don't be a bottleneck in our business. How do I know that one? And so that other people don't become bottlenecks and they can contribute to the best of their ability as well. All right, that's it. I'd love to know your experience with this. Are you a continuous learner? Oh, the one I forgot, which is for my friend Avil. Uh, be a reader. Be a reader. Always be reading and learning and growing. All right, have an awesome day. And I'll, of course, see you tomorrow.